The markets are open and we still see some red continue on from the very poor day that we had yesterday, but we do notice that the semiconductor industry is starting to pick up a little bit and today we are focusing on three of these in the sector that we do believe are undervalued and that we should consider to buy the dip in our portfolio now we're going to run through each one we're going to take a look at their metrics and get to our valuation the first one is lam research corporation which as we can see over the last few days it is down around eight percent over the last 12 months though up 17 percent and over the last 10 years like every single one we're going to look at today, has significantly outperformed the S&P up more than 1,000%. Now we notice it is trading in the mid to lower end of the 52 week range. We get a double buy signal from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street, although we can see Quant giving this a hold. In terms of a forward P, while well, trading at 21.3, significantly lower than the S&P right now, around 25. And it does also give a yield currently on a forward looking basis of 1.2 percent now as we notice it has come back some way from the 52 week high of 113 dollars and let's dive into some of their earnings what we notice over the next four quarters very good to see double digit growth earnings per share anticipated and we can also see over the last four quarters 100 percent track record they have beaten four out of four giving us confidence when we do look to june 2026 the forward PE will come down to around 17.25. Now, in terms of the metrics, we can get a 66 score on the dividend, indicating safety. We're going to touch upon dividend yield theory as well as the forward PE, but we do want to highlight here, just a few months ago, they did increase that dividend by 15%, something we love to see on this channel. And we do note earlier on in the year, it was reaffirmed that effectively a dividend cut is unlikely. Now, how did they perform in the last recession? So we are looking at some key metrics. 07, 09, great recession. No dividend paid, so no comparative data. They had negative 55% sales, which was well below the average of the S&P. Negative, but 12%, so a lot better. And they've also trailed the S&P during that time. Negative 64%. S&P itself, negative 55. We absolutely love this company's dividend track record. 15% increase this year, 13% on average over the last five years, and over the last 10 years, 46% year on year, very, very strong. And they've been increasing these dividends for the last 10 years consecutively. Now, when we take a look at their valuation, what we do notice over the last 12 months is that pretty much for the majority of this period, they have been trading above their intrinsic value as we see in the blue tunnel. Right now though, it is trading towards the lower end, which does give us a sense of a little bit of undervaluation, something we will focus on when we do run it through our own valuation model. Now we also look on this channel at dividend yield theory, telling us a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. We see that it isn't too far off the five year 1.17, so that is a sign of reasonable valuation. And when we focus on the forward P, 21 versus 19 again not too far off so you could argue again reasonable valuation although we can see it is below the sector p 25.7 and regardless of any of these undervaluation or overvaluation signals we're not looking at these in isolation and we will conclude towards the end now free cash flow payout below 50 percent is essentially our preference for this industry remember with earnings it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting so we ignore it Below 50%, it has been every single year, 25% in 2024, 28% expected over the next 12 months. So no reasons why they can't continue to offer those lovely double digit increases we come to see typically with this company. Now free cash flow per share, we want to see consistent increases over long term. Given this is a company in a cyclical industry, it is actually quite strong in terms of the growth, something we do love to see, and it is anticipated to increase, although marginally over the next 12 months, to 334 per share now as we can see cyclicality does come through their top line with just in the more recent year a 14 percent drop and at a bare minimum while we do want to see three to seven percent we can see on average they have got significantly higher and this is really shown when we do look at it from a numerical standpoint their total sales has pretty much tripled from 5 billion in 2015 to 15 in 2024 on top of that what they've done is return excess cash to shareholder pockets They've been doing share buybacks while a little bit inconsistently as we can see, 
pretty much from 2019. They have been doing it on a fairly consistent basis and something that we always like to see as an added bonus to investors on top of the double digit increase that LAM Research do provide. Now, when we get to the ROIC, we want 12% or more for the industry. We get that pretty much every year. Last few years looking absolutely phenomenal, 31% as well on a trailing 12-month basis. And remember, this does give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And these numbers will make it incredibly attractive for new investors, as well as those that want to top up in their current position. Now, operating margin, we get a sense here of operating efficiency going from 17% to 29. Love to see that top line increase as well as margin increase. And the free cash flow margin, pretty consistent in the very attractive numbers that they pull out year on year, 27, 29% just over the last two. Now we get to the final metric, the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Below 1.5 is what we see every single year. Numbers below, number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand, pretty much showing for the majority of the last 10 years and in 24 and over the next 12 months, it won't even take this company one day to pay off all of their debt. Very, very strong balance sheet, something we do value a lot when we do analyze companies on this channel now let's jump into the valuation model and as always if you do enjoy the content value is being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop now our intrinsic value of 101 dollars in today's episode we've got it through these three valuation models and typically on this channel we do our deep dives we talk about the inputs the outputs today we're going to get straight into it and at 101 dollars we always like to apply a margin of safety 10% execute on that wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. And if you believe that in today's episode, we'll buy up to $91. Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And what we can in fact see in today's episode for LAM Research, a high quality company in the semiconductor industry, you are getting a 25% MOS with Wall Street indicating 35% upside over the next year. They have a $103 price target. As we can see, they are very bullish. But as always, give us your thoughts in the comments below whether or not you are adding to any of these, which you could consider to be under the radar as we don't hear about them often. Nonetheless, they are high quality and we do want to hear your thoughts. We also want to let you know we have released our latest free weekly article. We drop one to your inbox every single Monday where we talk about what's happened in the market over the last few days, as well as running through undervalued stocks that we do believe deserve your attention. So click on the pinned comment below, sign up and you can start reading straight away. You'll also be able to grab a copy of 36 undervalued stocks for the month of October. We talk about how much upside Wall Street see over the next year and also flag those that sit within our own portfolio for those that are interested. On top of that, you can grab another spreadsheet going through 22 undervalued dividend stocks that Wall Street themselves believe have the most upside over the next year. So as we said, click on the pin comment below, sign up and you can read straight away. The next one we are referring to is KLA Corporation and this one has a triple buy rating right across the board. Right now trading at the midpoint of the 52 week range with a forward yield of 0.82%, a forward P just below 24. And as we can see over the last week down 12%. Over the last year, though, it is up 44%, outperforming the S&P, as well as massively outperforming over the last 10 years. Now, in terms of their earnings, we also get a similar to LAM Research. The next four quarters, double-digit growth anticipated year-on-year -year to the EPS. And over the last four quarters, quite substantially as well, they have outperformed analyst targets. And with the confidence that we should have with this company, if they can hit their EPS estimate, the forward P will come down to 21.28%. Now, we also get a safe dividend score of 71, as well as a massive dividend increase just last month at 17%. Now, in terms of the last recession, we noticed they maintained the dividend, didn't increase, didn't cut it. They had below average growth, and they also trailed the S&P negative 70%. Common theme that we are thinking about here is that the essentially the semiconductors as a whole in a recession do tend to underperform the S&P. Nonetheless, dividend growth looking absolutely great over the last five years as well as the last 10 years. And this is a company that has been increasing those dividends for the last 14 years on a consecutive basis. Now, in terms of the forward P, when we do look at over the last 12 months, we can in fact see here that every single day it has been overvalued based on this model. But again, we will run it through our own model. And on dividend yield theory, we also get something fairly similar. The yield is below the five-year rolling and the forward P does sit above the five-year average. Nonetheless, it is still lower than the overall sector for the information technology. 
Then in terms of the free cash flow payout, below 50% is what we want, below 50 is what we get. In fact, decreasing over the last 10 years, 25% in 2024, 23% over the next 12 months. So we can see no reasons why they can't continue with those double digit dividend increases. We also love their free cash flow. It has been increasing very strongly over the last 10 years. And over the next 12 months, this is expected to continue up to $29.30 per share. Then we get to the sales growth, very similar to Lamb Research, where they had negative sales in the more recent year. In fact, as well as having two out of the last 10 years negative. But as we said, when we do zoom out and look at it from an overview of the last 10, they have increased their top line here, pretty much triple from 2015 to 2024. Then in terms of these shares outstanding, we can see very marginally, very essentially inconsistent. They are doing some share buybacks. And ultimately, when we get to the ROIC, like Lamb Research, are looking phenomenal whilst inconsistent, 34% in 2024, in the low 40s in the two years prior. And we can see that consistency on a trailing 12-month basis. In terms of the operating margin, we do get a sense here of operating efficiency, 25% to 37%, and the free cash flow margin looking very strong, very consistent, something we do like to see in companies that we do consider here on this channel. We also note the net debt to EBITDA does look strong, well below 1.5 every single year, decreasing from the highs of 2022, 0.54 in 2024, 0.46 over the next 12 months. Therefore, we can see great balance sheet as well as the fact the dividend does look to be secure. Now, our intrinsic value of $840 isn't too far off Wall Street's price target of $850 over the next 12 months, where they see 21% upside. And as always, do remember you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, where you can run your own numbers, whether it's for this company or any others. In terms of margin of safety, well, at 10%, a buy at 756 at 15% at 713 and in today's episode not at the 20% level just yet sitting somewhere between 15 to 20 with Wall Street ultimately giving it that 21% $850 price target. We then move on to applied materials with actually a strong buy from Quant and a double buy from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street trading in the mid to low end of the 52 week range forward yield of 0.84% forward P of 22.4 over the last week we can see down 8% over the last year and over the last 10 years, we can see some strong performance and in fact, outperformance of the S&P 500. In terms of moving forwards, well, nice to see growth, two of the next four double digit in terms of EPS year on year comparison. And over the last four quarters, they have outperformed those analysts, 9.72 expected for October 2025, lowering the forward P to 19.65. Now, in terms of dividend safety, 86, the first very safe and very impressive 25% increase to the dividend in March this year. In terms of last recession, well, very similar to KLAC, maintained the dividend. They had below average growth and near S&P with a negative 57% recession return. We also do love the dividend growth in pretty much every single company today with double digits occurring over the last 10 years on average but we do notice only six years of consecutive increases with 18 years of paying a dividend without a reduction now in terms of their p what we do notice very similar again to klac it has been overvalued according to this model for the majority of that last year and when we do look at dividend yield theory not too far off with respect to both the yield as well as the five-year average so you could argue on these models slight overvaluation slash reasonable valuation same thing to be said though it is below that sector p of 25.7 in terms of the free cash flow payout, well, this is a common theme. Companies that have it below the industry average, there are no surprises why we see those double digit increases. 13% in 23, 20% over the next 12 months. So again, we should anticipate more increases at the double digit rate. Free cash flow also growing very nicely. A few years looking fairly static. Nonetheless, over the long term, moving in the right direction. Do need to consider though, over the next 12 months, this is anticipated to drop from 904 to 805 per share. In terms of sales growth, well, whilst it isn't negative in 2023, the more recent period, it is still fairly minimal at the bottom rate of 3%. But again, for those that do like to look at it from a numerical perspective, do want to zoom out, they have still tripled their top line over the last 10. They've also done significant amount of share buybacks, reducing it very significantly from 1.2 billion down to 837 million shares in the last quarter. ROIC, again, very, very strong. In fact, increasing over the last 10 years, 34% in 2023, 31% on a trailing 12-month basis, 
pretty much as we said throughout today's episodes, these three companies with a very strong return on invested capital. And the theme continues with operating efficiency, 17 to 29% on the margins and the free cash flow, nothing negative to say, again, looking very healthy. Finally, we get to the net debt to EBITDA, which we could again argue is a constant theme of these three high quality semiconductor stocks. Wouldn't even take them one day over the last 12 months, over the next 12 months to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Now, our intrinsic value at $237 does give a very nice MOS at 10% a buy at 213, at 15% at 201. And in today's episode, for applied materials, you are getting a 20% margin of safety bang on this price with upside according to Wall Street at 29%, their price target even higher than our intrinsic value at $243. As always though, do give us your thoughts in the comments below. And we just wanna show you over the last 12 months, we can clearly see KLAC and AMAT looking very strong in comparison to LRCX. Over the last five years, they've all performed very, very strongly in terms of massive outperformance of the S&P 500. And over the last 10 years, whichever one you would have selected, you would have had no issues with. They have performed very, very strongly. Question is, can they continue to massively outperform the S&P 500? Whilst past performance is no indication of the future performance, definitely is good to see that historically, these companies have been very, very strong. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are notified of these videos as they drop. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter by clicking on the pinned comment below and joining us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see all of you on the next one.